Hello. Uh, today I will go through the solutions of our final exam, which was quite uh, comprehensive, covering all the data structures we have seen throughout the semester. Uh, so it was that that's why it was quite important, uh, and it begins with the true/false part. Uh, where I see a stack question in the beginning about converting infix expression to a postfix. Recall for that task, I need to push operators into a stack, uh, and in this case, one, two, three, four operators go to stack. Then the special uh, character closer closing parentheses come, so those four are popped out. But then the expression continues with one, two, three, four, five, and six more operators. One of which is not an operator, actually, it's just an opening parenthesis. But uh, six items, it's more accurate to say, will be inserted to a stack, which makes the statement false because it says that at most four items exist in the stack. The next question is on graphs and it is a true statement because a JSTS matrix is good for this type of queries uh, recall for row i and column j if there is an edge between vertex i and vertex j then i have the weight of that edge here or if the graph is unweighted then i have a number one here but uh, regardless it is very easy to discriminate uh, this entry so unless it is a special sign like infinity, infinity means no edge, uh, you can decide this query. So what you basically need is to access that entry in your double array, which is a constant operation. Pre-order traversal on a max heap gives you a decreasing order false. Uh, it is we know that in order traversal on a binary search tree gives us a sorted result. Uh, however, for a min heap or max heap, we don't have this, that kind of property. We know that every node, the parent is bigger than its children, but it's not enough to design a traversal based sorting. We have a heap sort, which is totally different. Uh, quadratic probing is equivalent to double hashing with a secondary hash function of this. No, false. But if I have done this, if you, I have used secondary hash function as one, a constant function, and if I use linear probing, then this is true. Then if, uh, because if, remember uh, what the probing does is, for the i trial, you need to go look further at this, you need to shift this many slots, so i times fi. So if fi is 1, okay, the uh, in double hashing, instead of fi, I use this h2, my hash function. If that function is 1, so if this part becomes 1, basically I just look at i further, where i is linear. So then this would be a correct statement. Linear probing is equivalent to double hashing with a secondary function h2k equal to 1. But at this form, it is just a random statement that's false. In a hash table with separate cleaning, even if table size is smaller than the number of data items, yes, there can still be empty lists. So if your uh, table size is 3, okay, and if all your hash function maps to 2, okay, which is a bad hash function, uh, then this linked list grows, grows, grows a lot with millions of entries but I have empty linked lists like 1 and 3 so this is true worst case time complex of delete min uh, of a prior to implement as a binary search tree is log n incorrect because finding the minimum uh, can be as bad as O n time in a regular binary search tree. Not I am not talking about an AVL tree here, okay, or a self-balancing tree. So this can be your binary search tree, right? Six five, uh, 
uh, three let me put one more like one in this scenario the minimum will be as left as possible so I need to go through all these guys one by one so I will need ON operation ON time Hi height of a binary heap with two to the n elements is this so let's just get a counter example if I have four elements so one here the thing is I am talking about the binary heap meaning that I am talking about the complete binary tree the content doesn't really matter so here I have four items where n is two because four is two to the two uh, and the height is also two so the height would be n not n plus one a complete undirected graph of n vertices has this many edges correct if you look at this value as n plus 2 then it will make even more sense to you I guess because by definition complete graph means you need to connect all pairs of vertices with an edge and there are you need, there are n plus 2 pairs two different binary trees can have the same post order and parameter yes yeah so let's get a simple example here one two what is the preorder traversal remember it is root left right so in this case it will be one two preorder traversal of this guy will be one two here is a different binary tree okay let's do a post order traversal on it in the post order the root will be done in the end post so it will be left right root so in other words root will be done after the children so i will first do one the children and then do two and be careful this is as same as this one so it is true suppose head pointer shows the smallest of n sorted integer in a circular double linked list so we have that variation here third largest element so if this is my linked list five uh, seven and notice that I build it uh, in a sorted manner because it is what it is given to me that way head points to the smallest element so for the third smallest you need to do three advances and you can count two advances and you can get the third smallest in constant time but I am asking the third largest here still no panic because this is a circular linked list circular means last is connected to first and first is connected to last so I can just go from the first to last in one shot and double means I have previous pointers so now I can do two prefs to go to the uh, third uh, largest so this is true in other words let's continue write an iterative function that tells whether this array represents a maxi or not and I will begin the array with index 0 not 1 because in class we have started with 1 so you need to be careful about it so I, I, I believe I have some heap here so this is a maxi okay I will build it as a solution to part C but anyway so this array 94, 87, 71, 68, etc. is a max heap. Why? Because for any node at index i, look at the parent. So what is the index of parent? It is i minus 1 over 2. Okay? Because index starts from 0, not 1. So when i is 0, 1, 2, uh, you need to look at index 0, which is 2 minus 1, 1 over 2 is 0, right? So you will look at your parent, and if the parent is smaller than the children, then you quit. It is not a max heap. So this won't quit here because it's a max heap, but this is not a max heap because, for instance, here, again, do the same pattern. For this guy, when i is 2, the parent is at index this. And this parent 29 is smaller than 35, so return false. Okay. Otherwise, if you survive all the n tests, then you are good, you have a max heap. Here, what is the sibling of a given node? Uh, okay, uh, it's index k. 
uh, of the array so I see index k but I am using index k here okay so obviously this will be index k but anyway uh, so sibling is uh, the node two nodes are siblings if they share the same parent right so this is a very easy question uh, but you need to be careful about the extreme case so again let's come here but now start from index one okay so you need to be careful about those values so if this is index one this is index two and this will be index three right so if the index is an odd number your sibling is one less than you okay sibling of three would be two similarly sibling of five would be index four so if the then what uh, and if you come here if the k is odd then you just have to subtract one also extreme cases careful you will lose points if you forget them uh, one index one is the root it is also odd but there is no sibling for the root okay it's special so you need to return minus one since it doesn't exist similarly if the index I'm talking about is even then you have to look one further so the sibling of two is three so you need to do k plus one also for the uh, for the extreme case where you are dealing with the last item like six seven eight assume I don't have this so this is not eight and n is also eight because I have eight uh, members in my heap uh, so if k is n there is no further so you should return minus one okay and then I have this build heap question to you uh, you sh remember so we can clean this up uh, remember wheel tip so this is the initial array here is its heap representation wheel tip starts with the first non leaf which would be this node in the end and then it tries to uh, move, move it down as down as possible okay so it's about moving stuff down so 87 should it move down yes because 94 is bigger than so it moves down and 94 comes up okay so i am done with this basically i will proceed in this order this then this then this and then this so i am done with this guy so now let's try this guy 35 should it sink down go below yes because 71 is bigger and i did it 68 should it go down yes because 94 is bigger so 94 here and 68 here but it is not sufficient because it should go as down as possible 68 and 87 87 beats it so 87 goes up and 68 is here okay so this is also done and finally now it is this turn turn of this guy 929 it should go down should it go left or right i should go to the maximum i should replace it with the maximum so 94 here and 29 here then 29 should go further down so 87 here and 29 here and also one more step because 68 is bigger than 29 okay yes so let's continue here is your graph question uh, i want you to fold this tree of seven nodes with your name if your name isn't long enough you will append it with sorted letters in my case it will be yusuf ab and pre-order traversal would be root left right so y u s u f a b and the bfs of this would be first this bread and then this bread and then this bread and then this bread so it would be u s f a b uh, <clears throat> obviously there are multiple answers here so you can process a b or b a you can first read this child and this child so it's okay dfs you need to go as deep as possible in this direction first and then in this direction 
and then from here like this again multiple answers at when for instance you are here you can first go here done with this and then do this in this scenario the answer will be Yusuf BA or even interestingly even differently you first do the right hand side it's totally arbitrary and then do, do, do this part so S would be your last letter in your traverse topological sorting is the one where you put all the uh, nodes in a line and all the edges, directed edges, go from left to right remember these are all directed because I say so directions of edges go from top to bottom so for instance the use of AB all the edges in the end will look like this so there will literally be no edge that goes from right to left okay so these two are two of the possible answers I give you an adjacency list and ask you to construct the graph so one two three four five six seven nodes I have seven circles here and take one node like Detroit it happens to have two neighbors with edges weighted by 3 and 7 so one neighbor is Ithaca weight is 3 and the other neighbor is Denver eight, uh, weight is 7 okay and with that logic you need to fill this up and then I want you to run the extra beginning from LA which is this node so what it requires you to do is you will put 0 here and initially everywhere else is infinity so empty means basically the values inside the circles are the current shortest path distance estimates as we have discussed uh, so all of them are initially infinity and so this is the first iteration the immediate neighbors of this zero starting point Los Angeles will be this guy so 0 plus 2 is better than infinity so you will make this 2 similarly this will be 4 and this will be 9 and I am done with this node in the next iteration what I have in my min heap is 2 inf 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 4 and 9 I will select the minimum of these 5 guy 6 guys which is 2 and I will relax 2 so what I will do is 2 plus 5, 7 is bigger than, better than this, so it is updated and actually there is no other neighbor of 2, so it is done. Now in the next iteration, again there are hidden values here, uh, 7, 4, 9, 4 will be selected obviously and 4 plus 2 is 6 better than 9, so I should definitely see a 6 here. Similarly, 4 plus 2 is 6, it is updated. Uh, and yeah so uh, in the next iteration what I have in my hand is set of 6 and 7 I will select the smallest 6 so this doesn't really update anything but this 6 will update this node 6 plus 3 is 9 this becomes 9 so this should be your final answer write a function that returns the degree of the Kate vertex using the edges matrix basically you need to go to the k minus one row sorry you need to go to the k row but in this start from zero that's why this should be k minus one and you need to look at all n columns in that row as long as you see a one you increase your degree since it is unweighted you have to see a one if there is a connection there then comes the linked list question I give you the uh, classes about the linked list node and the linked list itself so here I ask you to insert construct a linked list using your ID where the most significant digit will be the first node so again you have to access them using some arithmetic not just manually put those nodes okay if you do you will lose points uh, so for this case 7523 you will insert 3 which can be obtained by using mod 10 
after the zero element so initially linked list is empty we have this dummy node or zero node as you recall you will insert it after the zero node so here comes the tree okay so this is connected to tree now and id is id over 10 so id becomes 752 now because i am doing integer division and for 752 mod 10 will be 2 and i will insert 2 after the zeroth element so 2 will so this will go away and now 2 will come after the zeroth element and insert will do the rest for you it will make this connection as well then comes the 5 after the zeroth element and then comes the 7 after the zeroth element okay so basically th these are the code lines i am looking for now that you have this linked list, uh, I want you to add up the values at odd indices. So in this case, 7 is the first node, 5 doesn't really count, 2 is the third node, it will count, and 3 doesn't count. So 7 plus 2, 9 should be your answer. Start with the first node, 7, so this would be your P. Okay, you add that P, if it exists, obviously, to your sum, and then you advance P. So this is my new P. And then you will advance it one more time because I am interested in the odd locations only. But before that, you need to do a segmentation fault. You need to check this, otherwise, you can hit a segmentation fault. If that P exists, then you can advance it, obviously, to this P. And again, 2 is not now, so I will add it to my sum, and sum becomes 9 now. So P is advanced here. And now I am at this line. If P is okay, which is okay, 3, P becomes another next. So P becomes null now. And since P is null, I don't do this anymore. I just return 9. Let's do the same with a recursion. Okay, so it's a nice recursion. Uh, I start with the first node. Sum is 0 initially. And call will be useful in the decision of even a node. Okay. Initially, call is 1, the first call. Uh, so mm, let's redraw everything 7, 5, and 2, and also a 3 here. Mm, so initially, this is my P, the first node. It is not null, and call is even, so I will advance P, but before that, I add the current data to the sum so sum was zero so the new sum that comes here would be now seven because it will be zero plus p data p dot data is the seven and call will be two now because it increases and i will advance p to p dot next so now this will be my new p in, in this iteration so this iteration since call is even i will recall with p dot next so p advances to this guy however the sum doesn't get updated i will just return the original sum or sum plus zero same thing so seven and call is now three okay and when call is three when i come here it is even so sum was seven i will add the current data is two seven plus two so the new sum that comes for the next session would be 9 um, and the new call value would be 4 yes um, and new p would be this guy okay again since call is even i will just add 0 to the 9 so 9 comes here but be careful p dot next is null because p is 3 and 3 dot next is nothing so I come here since P is null, I return what I have in my pocket, which is 9. Okay. And an AVL tree question. I ask you to insert these numbers. So 3, 5 regular binary search, 9, 3 insertions, 9 comes. There is a balance problem. Right, right situation. Do a left rotation. This is the answer. Then comes the 7. No problem. So 7 just gets inserted like this. Then comes the 8. There is a problem at this node. 
The problem is I did something bad to my left client by attacking its right subtree. So I'll LR scenario. So you need to do first an L rotation and then an R rotation, right rotation. So first rotation will not concern the troublemaker. It will be about the below stuff below. So left rotation on seven and eight will be will give me this result. Okay, eight seven, and then I will consider the troublemaker and the right rotation. So eight sinks nine down and the others are maintained automatically. So this will be your result after this point. Then comes six. Six gets, in, gets inserted here, right? And now there is a problem at this node. What is the problem? I did something bad to my left child by attacking its left sub three LL. So I need a right rotation. Uh, oh, sorry, there is no problem here, my bad. Uh, when six comes, this is okay, because yeah, okay. But there is a problem at this node because height of left sub tree is zero, height of right sub tree is two. Okay, so what is the problem again? Let's do our intuition. I did something bad to my right child by attacking its left sub tree. So I will first do a right rotation on this region without the troublemaker, and then do a left rotation with the troublemaker. So what is the right rotation? On this part okay on this part so basically uh, yeah right rotation on this part is so this is the clean version of that right rotation on this part is seven sinks eight down which comes with nine and six is again automatically maintained and then a left rotation with that in our consideration so seven will sink five down and five dot right will be seven dot left which is six okay so this is it and then finally comes the four which doesn't hurt my system i just edit here all the heights are good and the height of the final sub tree is three because the definition of height is the length of of a longest path from root to a leaf let's delete something then we will first do a regular binary search tree deletion in this case 4 is has one child so you will do the bypass tactic so this will be your result of course not sufficient because you are an AVL tree supposed to be so what is the problem here this is the troublemaker node I did something bad to my right client by attacking its left sub tree so you will do a right rotation followed by a left rotation so this will be your answer very similar to the one I did above so I will not repeat it what does the following code do so I want you to trace a code uh, so what this code does is I give you two trees okay so and so this is the first tree for instance and this is the second tree okay so let's also put another value here it doesn't really matter uh, if two trees are isomorphic then this function returns true okay isomorphic means they are structurally the same not the content not content wise so I don't look at the data field at all so I am only interested in the topology the structure so in this scenario they are not the same because the first node dot left exists but here it doesn't exist so even one bad example is enough so s initially represents this three and t represents this three the node of this three obviously so are they do they exist if they don't exist then it is consistent so they are the same okay in in this scenario they are not null so not here one of them is null, so this is the uh, contradiction scenario. But in this scenario, no, because it exists, it also exists. So currently they are okay, they are isomorphic. But I need to recurse, I need to look at the left of both and right of both. Only left, let's do the left of both. So the left of S would be this node, okay, which exists. So S 
the capital letter S will be false because it is not null. However, the left of T is null, so it will be true. So one of them is null. So I don't do this, but I will do this, unfortunately. So it is enough to detect this uh, distinction. Okay, so they can't be the same. So you just return false. Write a function that returns the number of nodes less than x. So we have done varieties of this, like counting the nodes, counting the leaves, etc. Counting the left leaves, etc. Uh, here I want you to count the number of nodes with a trick, like the node must have a value less than x. So you are at a node. If that value is less than x, then it contributes 1, it counts 1, every node counts as 1, and you will repeat the same to the left of it and to the right of it. If the current node is bigger than x, it won't contribute, but its children may still contribute. Hashing question. Uh, I want you to handle the collision with three different mechanisms. Uh, so let's insert using this hash function xmod13. Uh, so what it does is with separate chaining, uh, we will insert 9. 9 gets inserted here. So I start a new linked list here. And then later comes 11. 11 mod 12 is 11, so it comes here. Later I will delete it, that's why so you won't see it in the final red answer. Then comes 22. 22 mod 13 is uh, 9. So I will insert it here, but there is a linked list already started. You will insert it to the beginning of it. So you will need to put 22 to the left of it. It is important. You shouldn't put 22 after 9 because insertion to the end of a linked list is costly. It takes all and time. Insertion to the beginning, however, is very fast, constant time. That's why you should use or one time insertion. So, so I will look at this order as well while grading this. And then let's do one more. 64 mod 13 is 12. It just lands here, starts a new linked list, etc. Uh, yeah, so let's do it with linear probing. Then I have this hash table, the same table of size 13. Uh, but I won't use a separate data st structure like a linked list. So 9 comes, it lands to index 9, I put it. Then comes 11, 11 mod 13 is, so I put it here, again it was removed later. Then comes 22 mod 13 is 9, so I want to put it here, but it is occupied, so I will try the next location linearly. So, just one later. If it is also occupied, I will look at two. Two, at two ahead. Occupied, three ahead, four ahead. So I will go like this. But luckily, one ahead is already okay. So nine is occupied. I will put 22 here. Okay. So with that logic, you will fill it with linear probing. Uh, and I can do also a double hashing to you. Double hashing, so would we'll do this, recall, uh, for the i trial, I will do i times fi. In linear, uh, so I in, in double hashing, fi will be that second function called h uh, i to x. And it is also defined as this thing. Okay, so let's do it. 9, insert here, no problem. Then comes 11. 11 mod 13 is this, so 11 is inserted here. Then comes the 22. Now, 22 mod 13 is 9. I want to insert it here, but it is occupied. So I will try the next value. i becomes 1. So 1 times. Then 22 is fed into my hash function, what is 22 mod 5? It is 2, right? So 5 minus 2 is 3. So this evaluates to 3. Okay, this part is 3. i is 1, so 1 times 3 is 3. I will look 3 ahead. So 1, 2, 
three and here comes the 22 okay that is your double hashing logic uh, but I will also add additional questions like load factor and number of probes in successful searches load factor is easy this is the number of elements over the table size it's always one two three four five six seven eight elements in the end because I insert more than eight but they most of them are deleted or some of them are deleted anyway so 8 over 13 is the answer for all the cases number of probes is different however for a successful search when I want to search 28 28 mod 13 is 2 I just look at here and I just do one probe one action now continue because of 28 I have one cost for 30 30 mod 13 is 4 only one probe then comes 21 21 mod 13 is 8 and it is in the beginning of the linked list so one pro now it is interesting 99 mod 13 is 8 i come here one pro not 99 i come here so two props you need to put two here similarly one for this guy and two for this guy and for 9 I need to do 3 probes because 1 here, 2 here, 3 here and for 64 you will do 1 probes in the end you have what is this sum? 3, 5, 6, 8, 12 12 over 8 8 because I have 8 uh, items average is obtained by dividing by 8 so let's do the probing in the linear probe, uh, probe count in this linear probe example for 48 what is the cost of 48 48 mod 13 is 9 so I will look at index 9 it is not 48 so not successful currently look at the next one because linear probing so 2 3 4 5 so I will get 5, a cost of 5 from one item. Then for 28, 28 mod 13 is 2. I do only one action, one probe. So with that logic you will have eight, 6 more values. First 2 of which is 5 and 1. And apparently the sum will be 20. So it is worse than separate cleaning in this example same logic you will find that's the number for double hashing as well and the final question comes where i ask you to write uh, a stack a, a function with a stack and then i will ask you to trace a function with a queue that mm -hmm. operates on a queue and hence we will be covering all the data structures properly so for this case uh, you have two stacks they are sorted with max on top so 8 6 4 maybe and here is your other stack let's make it even bigger uh, 5 3 2 1 0 Okay, they are both sorted so I want you to create a new stack that is also sorted with max on top okay so I will use I am allowed to use other stacks obviously so I will use one stack so I will look at the top of this and top of this so this is s1 this is s2 obviously <clears throat> the winner gets inserted gets pushed to do s3 so in this case 8 is popped and inserted then 6 versus 5 6 wins 4 versus 5 5 wins 4 versus 3 4 wins and now be careful sum is empty now so s this condition is not true anymore because s1 is empty now i quit and then i flush the remaining of the uh, of the other stack to this S3 so this is 
at this point maybe you notice that it is the same logic in your merge sort right in the merging of the merge sort but I am using a stack here for fantasy purposes okay so I need to do a flash so flash so s1 is it empty yes it means that s2 isn't empty so until it is empty I will pop stuff from s2 and push it to s3 so pop 3 and here then 2 then 1 and then 0 and so this is also empty now but there is still a problem this is a sorted list okay but max is not on top it is reversely sorted you need another stack now the s4 comes here which is this set of lines you will basically pop stuff from here and push it here so as long as s3 has some content pop it out like zero and push it into s4 okay so zero one blah 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 until it sleeps until it hits uh, number eight in the top and finally in the q question we are going to work on this example so let's put this in front of us like a q starting with seven six sorry seven and seven and comes the two and three is enough i guess uh, so what i do is initially this is the front end and this is the back end uh, f would be the, the q or from so six will be the q first this is the front end so f would be 6, g will make sense later, and n is the size of the q, which is 4, n is always 4. So I remove 6, and then I enqueue it as well, interesting. So 6 gets removed here, and it gets here as well. So this is your new front now, and this is your new back. Now let's continue to understand what's going on. G will be the result of the dq so i will dq 7 because it is its turn okay and uh, is 7 bigger than f6 yes so 7 is bigger so f will be 7 okay so f is likely to store the largest right it's i get that wipe now so 7 is bigger than 6 f is 7 so f is 7 now uh, and also this key gets inserted to the back as well okay so remember it was the Q so it is now here now I will do it and many times I have done it first time now I will do it the second time where G is 2 it is the Q <coughs> so it is gone and it is also <coughs> enqueued back like here too uh, and also in the meantime there's also this business is 2 bigger than f no so don't update f yes so f will keep the max i am sure about it now okay now in the next iteration so i did it twice now in the third iteration g is this guy 3 and i enqueued enque it and i will also enqueue it back 3 is here it is, it is my g uh, and by the way, is 3 bigger than 7? No. So no update to F. And I enqueued it. So that was my third iteration. And I will do it four times. So let's do it one more time. So basically, I have processed the whole queue. Notice that. Now I will process it one more time because I need to do it four times. So 6 is 6 bigger than 7? No, not really. So it doesn't update F at all. Uh, but I will also enqueue it back so this was my G it was enqueued back okay so this is the final Q and in the end G points to this 6 okay be careful so what I return is F is the max we have established that uh, plus so there is my bet here uh, nothing to worry so this should be the first element in the original array right because uh, remember six was the first element not the last element uh, so don't panic i haven't graded your exams yet 
and it is good to double check my solution so it's supposed to be for the first element if I have executed this for loop from i to n minus 1 however then I wouldn't have processed the 6 in the end so g would stick with the 3 which was the last element it was also good to maintain the original q in the end so but for some reason I uh, went it from 0 to n so that's why the q after this function will also be different from the input q right the basic the first element in the original q would be the last element now uh, it is uh, not a big deal so for the sake of this question you should see that f is the max and g is the first of the original yes uh, so with that we have finished uh, the solutions of all the exam questions uh, i hope you have understood them uh, and i also hope that you enjoyed this exam as well as the whole class in this semester yes so with that uh, i will stop thanks